matter. Okay, there's 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 15, 16 of us sitting here right now. One of us is standing. I don't know how many of you are online, but my guess is that sitting with you, there's less than 16 people. Do you matter? This is a tiny amount. Should we just forget it? It doesn't matter. Well, some of you have been around enough. Actually, I know all of you that are in this room personally. Um, I think I've told all of you one way or another, you matter. Sometimes I've told you that in those exact words, you matter. And some of you have picked up on this and have said it back to me that I matter. And that's really awesome. I don't know about you, but when I hear that, it feels good. And there's a reason for that. Because this world screams, you don't matter. Unless. Your church doesn't matter unless it's at least kind of full. Yeah. You don't matter unless certain people approve of you. Maybe your teacher, your parents, a significant other, friends, co-workers, that if they don't approve of you, you don't matter. You don't matter unless you make a certain amount of money. You don't matter unless you have a certain kind of job. You don't want to be burger flipper your whole life, do you? You don't matter unless you get a certain amount done. You're supposed to do so much every day. And if you just sit and play computer all day, you're just on online, well, clearly you don't matter. That's what the world says. You don't matter unless. Who's right? I'm just some dork standing in the front of a church in a white robe. The whole world shouts, you don't matter unless. I say you do. Who's right? I want to tell you about a guy named John. Uh, John, uh, last week we talked about a guy named John, named John the Baptizer. Uh, this is a different John. Just like there's a bunch of people named Jennifer in this world, you probably know like 30 of them. Uh, there were a lot of people back then named John. This is a different John. This was little brother John. And I don't know if anyone here is a little brother. Um, I'm not. But I know enough little brothers to know that sometimes little brothers get ignored. Sometimes little brothers feel like they're not that important. And sometimes their families let them. John was a little brother. In fact, he ended up becoming one of the three most important disciples of Jesus. But maybe if you've heard that, it's always Peter, James, and John. He's always the last one. It's because James was his older brother. He always came first. John didn't matter. And he lived in a town that didn't matter. I grew up in North Dakota. I very rarely have anyone say, North Dakota, wow, that is so awesome. Often enough, it's jokes or pity. Wow, you grew up there. Um, that's where John grew up. Not in North Dakota, but the North Dakota of Israel, uh, a t uh, an area called Galilee. And he didn't just grow up in a town in Galilee. He grew up in Capernaum, which wasn't even important enough to be a Jewish town. It was half Jewish, half Gentile, which meant if you were Jewish, it was really a junk place to live. And he didn't have an important job. He was a fisherman. He smelled like fish guts. The entire world shouted at John, you don't matter. Well, James one day heard about this guy, this baptizing guy, and James brought his little brother with, and the two of them got to listen to this baptizer guy, and they listened for a while. They got to be there for a little bit, and John treated them as if they were important. In fact, uh, the book of John tells us that they were actually the baptizer's disciples. So the baptizer treated John as if he mattered. And then one day, the baptizer points and goes, Look, the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sin of the world. And James sort of nudges his little brother and says, Hey, we've got to check this out. And they go and they meet this lamb who ends up being named Jesus. I don't think that's a surprise to any of you who are in here today. And Jesus treats John as if he matters. Jesus invites John and big brother James to come follow him. And they follow him for a little bit. In fact, John gets to be a witness to Jesus' very first miracle, turning water into wine. 
and then the baptizer was thrown into prison. Have you ever had something where you thought you had something that made you matter and that thing was taken away from you? Maybe it was a relationship, maybe it was a job. I don't know what it was, but my guess is that you've lived through that. This thing makes me matter and now I've lost it. That's what happened. The baptizer was put in prison. This thing that made John matter, he was gone. And John and big brother James just go back to work. They start fishing. And that's when Jesus does something really weird. Jesus sets up his ministry headquarters in Capernaum, in this nothing city that's only half Jewish, in this nothing area of Israel. And Jesus doesn't just set up his headquarters there. He starts teaching very purposely in earshot of where John works as a fisherman. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine someone running for president who says, I'm going to set up my headquarters in your town, and not only that, but I'm going to make sure that all my speeches are in your job, in your, in where you can hear, because you're that important to me. That'd be incredible. That'd be crazy. But that's what Jesus does. And then one day as Jesus is teaching, he looks over at John and says, John, I want you to be with me full time. You matter to me. And so John started following. John mattered to Jesus. And you matter just as much. The world screams you don't matter unless, but you do. Jesus looks at you and says, you matter. I came to earth for you. You matter. And that, I, I'm hoping, makes you feel kind of warm inside. Kind of makes you go, wow, this is really cool. But there's a problem. See, the world says you don't matter unless. And because we live in the world, none of you are in heaven yet. Maybe you've realized that. That message soaks into our bones. So the first step is realizing, yes, I matter, but then what happens is we start treating the people around us as if they don't matter. It's very natural. The world works this way. I don't matter unless, so that means you don't matter unless. It's one of the reasons that we fight, that we argue. You ever do that with someone? <laughs> You're from Chicago? Pfft. You cheer for that team? The Vikings? Really? What's wrong with you? I mean, that's why we do those things. Sometimes it's done out of teasing love. But what we're doing is we're trying to say, no, you're not important. You don't matter. I do. That's what gatekeepers do. I hear plenty of stories, especially of women that will wear shirts that have a band on them. And some dweeb of a guy walks up and says, really? Can you name the third album that they put out and the, the number three track on that album? Shut up. But we do that to each other. You don't matter unless, even that phrase, you don't want to be a burger flipper, do you? Burger flippers apparently don't matter. That's what we're saying. And so what we do is we live that way. Even when we hear Jesus says, I matter, I live as if you don't matter unless. And that's really bad. Because Jesus says, you will be judged by how you judge others. If you say that you don't matter because, Jesus is going to look at you and say, you don't matter because. And that's really scary. It's terrifying. So what do we do? Look at how Jesus showed you that you matter. He didn't just show up. It would be incredible if Someone running for U.S. president said that you matter. That would be insane. Uh, last week, I got to attend uh, the leadership conference in Chicago. And a black woman who's been Wells all her life gave a presentation, and she did a fantastic job. She talked about racism and how that shows up in the Wells and how to fight that. Really, really awesome. And at the beginning, I, I was impressed with her. She was doing a great job. She was talking well. She was talking from experience. And then she put up a picture. She was actually the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. for about two and a half years. 
That's crazy. And suddenly, she mattered even more to me. Wow, look at that. But she took time to come and talk to us. Now that's really cool, that a former UN ambassador came to talk to us. But she's never done anything for me personally. I've never met her. I never shook her hand. There were 13 of a, 1,300 of us at the leadership conference. I didn't get to talk to her personally at all. But Jesus didn't just show up and talk. He showed up and died. He said, you're so important to me that even knowing how you've treated others, I will die for you, and I will take your sins away. You matter so much to me that I forgive you. I don't just say, yeah, it's fine, it's all right. He said, I, I take your sins away. Your guilt is gone. You matter so much to me, I shed my blood for you. That's how Jesus shows you that you're important, that you matter to him. So for all the times that you treated other people like they don't matter unless you're forgiven. Now you get to be like Jesus. You matter, period. Now you get to treat other people like they matter. How do you do that? You show them love. You listen to them. You take time to spend time with them. You don't act bothered. And yeah, that means I, I've got plenty to confess to. And I've got plenty I've been forgiven of and need to change. Because if I matter, then you matter. And I want to express that. So yeah, even though there's just a few of us here today, even though there might be just a few people worshiping with you in person today, you matter. Now, show other people they matter too. Amen. Let's stand. Now, the peace of God that is better than anything we can understand will